Good morning. I'm Christine Gibbs from Step Ahead Physiotherapy in Governor Square. Thank you for joining me for another segment of Staying a Step Ahead. We're getting into the heart of running season, and I'd like to give you my physiotherapy tips on how to get you the start and finish line pain and injury free. I'm not a running coach, but I'd like to give you my physiotherapy tips on how to keep your body prepared for the high demands of running. It's a common misconception that running is just about your legs. Core and trunk stability is huge in running. You need a stable pelvis in order for your swing leg to function properly and the stance leg to keep you balanced while running. When you're running and landing, you need this leg to be nice and solid so the swing leg can follow through properly. You also need a stable core for your arms to swing. If you don't have the opposite arm, opposite leg running in unison, you will get off balance. Running posture is very important in running. Most of us sit at a desk all day, which perpetuates a forward head and rounded shoulders. If you run like this, your lung volume is significantly decreased. You really need to stand upright, open your shoulders, using your arms to pump. Now, if you're leaning forward when running, you're going to activate all your posterior muscles. Try that now. Stand up, lean forward, and really feel your calves activate. The opposite holds true as well. If you lean backwards, the front of your legs activate, and you might end up with shin splints. Flexibility is very important in running. When you sit at a desk all day, your hip flexor gets tight, which limits the trailing limb posture. Your hamstrings can also get tight, which limits the forward limb posture. You can also get a very tight outer hip, your iliotibial band, which can cause outer knee pain and some foot dysfunction as well. Many people also have tight calves. You really need to stretch these muscles to have proper limb function in running. To stretch your hip flexor, put one knee on the ground, other foot out in front, and really lean forward, getting the back leg to stretch. You'll feel a nice stretch up in your hip. A calf stretch is best done off of a stair, just putting the ball of your foot on the stair and dropping your heel down. To get your hamstring, just put your heel up on something, knee slightly bent, and lean forward, really getting a stretch to the back of your thigh. Your quadricep muscle in the front of your thigh is stronger than your hamstrings and glutes on the back, but they should be by about 60 to 75 percent. An imbalance in these muscles can lead to injury. A great way to strengthen is get a piece of tubing, tie it around your ankles, and stand on one leg. Take the other leg back behind you. Now, this also works the balance of the stabilizing limb, the strength of the stabilizing limb, and the leg going out to the side. You want to go to the side and back, really focusing on your glute strength. A major buzzword in running is pronation. It is a general misconception that all pronation is bad. You must have pronation to dissipate shock and the force of landing. You must pronate when you land. Unless you have excess pronation, you do not need to limit it. In fact, limiting pronation with a motion control shoe can actually cause injury. When you land, you need to roll in for shock absorption. Not allowing proper pronation may lead to chronically tight Achilles tendons, calf strains, outer knee pain, and iliotibial band tightness. Too much pronation must be controlled, either through a motion control shoe or a custom fitted orthotic. If you have too much pronation that goes uncontrolled, it can cause inner knee pain, shin splints, and tibia pain. My physiotherapy tips to avoid injury are to stretch daily if possible but especially on the days that you run do the stretches that I showed you and hold them for 30 seconds also grab a piece of tubing and do that strengthening I showed you to focus on your trunk and pelvis stability good footwear is also essential you must have a shoe that's right for your foot type it doesn't matter which brand but make sure it's motion control if you need it or neutral if you need it also replace your footwear every 300 to 500 miles depending on how much you weigh and how demanding you are of your sneakers I always encourage a proper warm-up and cool-down, and rest days are essential. You cannot underestimate the value of rest. I hope this information has been helpful to get you started or continue on your running program. If you need more information on any of the topics I've discussed or have a more involved running issue, please contact us at A Step Ahead Physiotherapy. Thank you for joining me. Tune in next month to continue staying a step ahead. Hope to see you on the road soon. All right, so Christine encouraging everybody to get in touch with them if they are experiencing any pain while running at the Step Ahead Physiotherapy. You can give them a call at 745-ASAP at 745-2727. You can also email info at astepaheadphysio.com. And then their website is astepaheadphysio.com step ahead as well, so you can always check that out. And I know that they sometimes um, do seminars there as well. They'll, they'll mm -hmm. do some free weekend seminars on a Saturday for 
different athletes. Sometimes they do running and tackle other topics. So right, yeah. you know, keep keep a, keep a step ahead by keeping track of what they're offering over <laughs> exactly. there. Exactly. Pain doesn't. Ha I mean, it, obviously, when you're you know exercising, you're going to experience a little bit of pain sometimes. But there is a point at which you exactly. need to stop and say, okay, I need to actually make sure I'm not injuring myself permanently here.